Hey gang, so you're probably watching this video because you're thinking about taking A+. Plus. So, just to give you a quick little overview, the 900 series, which is 901 and 902, retires on July 31st. But don't worry, if you've been studying for that, you can still take that exam. As long as you get certified before July 31st, you're good to go. We actually got a few courses over at itmagickey.com that'll help you get certified before that time. But anyway, that's not why you're here. The new version is 1001 and 1002, right? So you got 901, 902, and you got 1001 and 1002. The difference between the two is that, like I said, the 900 series expires on July 31st. You can either take that or you can take the new version. The new version has a more emphasis on cloud computing and virtualization. So that's one of the major differences between the two. Both of them still have two parts. Both of them still have the same score. So you need a 675 to pass the first part and a 700 to pass the second part. If you get both of those together, then you'll pass the A-plus certification. So after this quick little introduction I'm giving you guys, there's going to be a review of A-plus questions, right? So A-plus questions, stuff to look out for tips and tricks. Not tricks, but just some tips, all right? And other than that, I'll see you in class. Hey gang, let's get straight into it. All right, so we're going to talk about the A plus 1001 exam. So to pass exam, you need 675 out of 900. Every CompTIA test is going to be out of 900, except CAS plus, which is way, way down the line for you guys. All right, um, multiple choice and performance based questions is what you're going to see on the exam. So multiple choice just means that you get a question and you have multiple answers that you can choose. Now the performance base is talking about simulations. You probably heard about this if you've been researching a little bit. Performance based simulations are um, CompTIA's way of doing hands on. So instead of just having a question and then you got to answer it, you're going to actually have to perform some kind of function, right? So it may be securing a wireless network, it may be uh, making a network as secure as possible, installing RFID, uh, installing uh, hotspots, installing uh, virus protection. Just long story short, it may be, uh, I guess I'm making the story even longer. It may be installing new components inside of a PC. It is going to be actually applying something. If that makes sense. Instead of just a question and an answer, you actually actually perform something, all right? All right, so you get a maximum of 90 questions. Um, for most of my students, they get around 75 to 80, and you get 90 minutes. Now, looking at that can be kind of scary because, oh, shit, wait a minute. 90 questions, 90 minutes, I don't have enough time. You're going to, that's more than enough time, trust me. If you prepare properly, uh, it's more than enough time. And if this test prep isn't quite enough for you, you can actually head over to itmasterkey.com. We have courses for the 1000 series as well as the 900 series to get you fully prepared for the exam. So this is the areas that are focused on on the actual exam. We got mobile devices, networking, hardware, virtualization, and cloud computing. Virtualization and cloud computing is one of the main differences, all right, between this exam and the 900 series. So this exam focused more on that, and that's pretty much the only real um, difference that I've seen so far. Uh, and last but not least, hardware and network troubleshooting. So these are five domains that you need to focus on to be successful in the test. And now I'm going to show you a quick little video that's going to show you what it's going to be like and what it's going to feel like when you're actually inside the testing center.
All right, gang, we're back. So since we know exactly what it's going to be like when we go inside the testing center, let's go through a couple questions and answers to try and see where you're at right now. All right, so this isn't meant to be, oh, you know, I'm about to give you all answers to the damn test. Not at all. I'm just trying to give you um, more clarity and a better perspective on what you need to know and how your thought process needs to be. Because on these exams, especially troubleshooting and critical thinking is going to um, – be pivotal to actually pass the exam because damn near every question is something is broke how do you fix it okay so let's get straight into it Ronnie accidentally spills soda onto his laptop and Ronnie brings his laptop to you with expectation that you'll be able to fix it what steps should you take to ensure the laptop can be salvaged choose two easy perfect remove the internal parts from the case Take notes of screw locations. So, taking notes of screw locations, when you're taking apart a PC or a laptop, all the screws may look like they're the same size, but some of them are a little bit smaller, some of them may be a little bit bigger. So what you can do is just take notes, write down, okay, this screw goes here, this screw goes there, or even easier, since 2019, you can just take a video, right, as you're taking it apart, and then just watch the video back when you're actually trying to put it back together, okay? Next up, Jamal wants to save paper by printing on both sides. What printer setting must be on for this to happen? Easy. Duplex. So duplex, if the duplex setting is on, it's going to print on the front as well as the back. A customer comes to you about purchasing a new computer. The customer will use a computer for watching online videos while his son will use it for gaming. What feature should be the focal points that satisfy both users? So what's something we need to focus on to make the dad happy as well as the son? Easy. So the processor is the most important thing on or would be the most important thing for this user, right? So SSD hard drive, it would make the operating system a little bit faster, but it wouldn't necessarily make the gaming experience fast enough to handle the game that he's probably going to be playing. Uh, the RAM would make uh, startup time and things like that a lot faster and it would actually improve the game performance as well but if the quad core or if the processor wasn't strong enough then it wouldn't matter all right if it couldn't handle all the processes that the game is throwing at it have, having to render all the graphics and all this other stuff then it wouldn't um it wouldn't work and actually some of the computer games now you may need a, a damn octa core processor just for it to run smoothly all right two cooling fans cooling fans are important uh, no matter what you're doing but for this, it would be um, a later thought as opposed to um, the processor, all right? Soho. A Soho router would connect. You know what? I'm actually glad I put that in there. So acronyms. Acronyms are a huge thing on um, this test, right? So if you ever see acronym, you don't know what the hell it stands for, make sure that you go um, look it up just so when you're on the exam, you actually know what's going on, okay? So Soho stands for small office, home office. So let's keep on rocking out. A Soho router would connect physically with your computer to provide internet using which cable? Super easy. Ethernet. Perfect. All right, gang. So next up, blank would allow for cloud services to be scalable. So scalable is just a big word that means that as your company grows, the network and your capabilities are able to sustain that growth. So let's say that currently you have 100 users and in 300, I mean, excuse me, in a year you have 300 users, right? If you're scalable, it means that you can accommodate that extra 200 users, all right? So out of these, what would make cloud services scalable? Easy. Rapid. Hold on. Where's my little bull there? Where's my bull? There it is. Rapid elasticity. All right, so... Another acronym. Like I said, acronyms can literally whoop your ass on this test. So make sure that you're comfortable with acronyms. All right. So in theory, SSO or single sign on should reduce the number of trouble tickets received daily. Is that true or false? So single sign on really quick just means that you sign on to one platform and you have access to several. Right. So let's say that you sign into Facebook. And if you notice, it's pretty much integrated into a lot of other sites. You sign into Facebook and then you go to another um, site and it says enter username and password or 
sign in with Facebook or sign in with Google, all right? Meaning in that you sign in one time, but you got access to several different things. Easy. It would make it true because when you get inside a help desk or work in help desk, um, a bulk of the stuff you're going to be doing is pretty much just resetting passwords because people forget their passwords and lock themselves out. All right. Which of the following solutions will be classified as SaaS or software as a service? That's another uh, acronym. Like I said, whenever you see acronyms, look it up really quick because it's going to help you inside the test. Because a lot of times the acronym or give you the answer or the answers, the actual answers you have to choose from are going to be acronyms. And if you don't know what the hell they stand for, you'll have a rough day, man. Easy. So a web-based calendar would be um, an example of software as a service. What is used for wireless payments made by proximity? Easy. NFC, another acronym, which I know you guys love, stands for Near Field Communications, and that's something that you can wireless pay for something via proximity. You got to hold your phone or whatever it is close to the reader, and then it'll take the payment from you. The lead technician was just asked to go to grab some. The lead technician has just asked you to go grab some RAM from the server. What should you come back with? Only two of these answers, you know, remotely uh, make sense. And then one of them is a for sure, for sure. Easy. DDR4 is a type of RAM that you will get for the server. SODEM is a type of RAM as well, but it's used for laptops. Okay. Blank is the name of the software or device that hosts a virtual machine. Easy. Hypervisor. Perfect. What most likely has happened if you have an APIPA address? Another acronym for you. I know you guys love that. A PIPA. Shit, this is going to be the answer. Well, oh well, that's what we're here for anyway. So you get an APIPA address, which is a private address, if you can't get an address from the DHCP server because you can't communicate with it, you're not connected to it. So it has to assign you something, so it gives you a private address, and that address is going to start with 169. So quick troubleshooting, if you got a 169 IP address, it's because you are not connected to the DHCP server. Thus, this answer is going to be DHCP failure. All right, an RJ45 is used to terminate an Ethernet cable. Is it true or false? Terminate is just a big ass word, an unnecessary word. It just means that that's what's used to end the cable. That's what's used to actually make the cable functional. So, just a little connector that you put on the end of the cable to make it plug into whatever you want it to plug into. And this question or statement is true. All right, gang. So, we went through that really quick um, test prep. Like I said, if that wasn't enough for you, you can go ahead and dump, in, dump into, jump into a full course over at itmagicky.com, either whether you're going for 900 or 1,000 series, we got you covered. But this is just a bonus tip. The verbiage on the damn test is what gets a lot of people, right? So look out for this stuff. Choose all that apply. Choose all that apply. If one applies, if two applies, if three applies, click all that apply. What's the next step? Look at the scenario, look at what they've done, and what's the next thing that they should do? What's the first step? So looking at the scenario, looking at what's going on, what's the textbook first step? Is it taking off your jewelry? Is it powering the machine off? So on and so forth. I put what's the next step twice because I guess it's extra important, but that it is important. I just put it twice by mistake. What's the best option? So looking at the scenario, once again, looking at the individuals that's in the scenario looking at the organization, right? What is the best option for them? All right. All right, gang, I know it makes you super sad, but our time has come to an end. So as I said before, if you need any more uh, in-depth uh, tutoring, course, whatever, uh, you can head over to itmagicky.com and um, hop into a course. Follow us on all our social media platforms, but most importantly, um, drop in the comments if you're about to take a test, what test you're about to take, and if this test prep helped you. And other than that, I'll see you in class.